Welcome to the course timetabling example in Opta Planner. So in this use case, we'll be assigning courses, a time and a place. So for example, the math course, uh, which exists out of three lectures, this is uh, math zero, math one and math two, needs to be assigned uh, a place. So this is a room. And in this case, we've assigned all three lectures to the room 36 and a, a place. So the first uh, and a time and the first uh, lecture of uh, the math course, so math zero, we've assigned this to the Monday morning, the first, lec uh, the first lecture of the day. And the same thing, uh, and for uh, math one, so the second lecture, we've assigned the second uh, period on Monday. And for math, uh, the last math lecture, we've assigned it on Wednesday on the second period, uh, second period of that day. Now we can, you can guess the first hard constraint in this case is that no two lectures should be uh, given in the same room at the same time. And you can easily see that we have a, a feasible solution for that constraint at least um, as the one we're shown here. So let's scroll to the right and you can see that in no place two lectures are actually um, being given in the same room at the same time. But there's a different point of view that we can look at this data set. Let's take a look at it from the teacher's point of view. So um, these are the same lectures, uh, but now we're showing for each lecture uh, which, uh, which teacher is giving him is or her or is giving that course. And um, you can see, for example, that the French course is being given by teacher 10. And these names are their real names have been obfuscated. And this is uh, the first course is on a Monday, uh, the third period there. And then the second one is on a Tuesday, the third period and so forth. Now, if we look uh, into these uh, set, we will actually see uh, the math course in here too, which is given by teacher 25. And you can see that uh, it's, of course, at the same periods as we've seen them in the rooms. So if we would uh, change the math course to a different period, it would both affect the rooms and the teacher's view because they would actually change in both in both views. Um, you can also see that this teacher is giving another course. Uh, and you can see that uh, in this case, none of the teachers have to give two, t two uh, courses at the same time. So that's our second hard constraint. Um, there should be no uh, conflicts for the teachers. And there's of course a third way we can look at this and this is from the curricula. So a curriculum is a group of students uh, and they follow a number of lectures. So uh, let's look for our math course again. Here's our math course and um, the thing is that multiple curricula can use the same, uh, can follow the same lecture. So in this case, the math lecture is actually uh, give, is actually followed by three uh, curriculum uh, curriculums. So curricula. So uh, this group of students um, is joined by this group of students is joined by this group of students um, in that lecture. Um, and of course, um, in one curriculum. There is a natural hard constraint that uh, in one curriculum, no two, uh, two lectures should be should have the same period. So, um, so it should be possible for the students to uh, attend all of their lectures. Now, if you look at this, in this case, we can actually see there's one violation. There's a violation here. So on the Monday, on the fourth period, you can see that we're using more space there, and that's because if we scroll down. We can actually see that uh, this lecture and this lecture are given at the same time, but they actually share a curriculum. Actually, they share three curriculums, as you can see. And that also explains why at the bottom we see minus three hard constraints, because three hard constraints have been broken. Um, so let's, let's take a look. So this is the this uh, one of these lectures on the on the on the fourth period, zero fourth period, and this is one also on the zero fourth period. So um, that's not good. So let's try to move uh, one of them. Um, apparently this lecture is in a lot of curricula, so let's move the other one. And let's move it down to over here somewhere. Uh, let's take period three, five, four, all right? And um, as you can see, we've moved this lecture down here. Um, this is always the same lecture, it's just repeated because it's, it's in multiple curricula. But um, you can see if you scroll now to the beginning that there are no conflicts in the curricula, which is good. So uh, all, the, all the students can attend all of their classes. 
Uh, as we look at the teachers, this is good too. No conflicts either. All the teachers can attend all of their all of their classes, all of their courses, all of their lectures. Uh, but if you look at the room's uh, point of view, uh, then we have a problem. Then we have two lectures in the same room at the same time. So that's no good. Um, so let's move one of these uh, again and hope that that will actually solve uh, and we will finally get a feasible solution. So uh, let's take, so we just move this one. Let's take that one, uh, this lecture and move it to one uh, period sooner. Great, we've just solved it over here. Uh, no more rooms conflicts. Let's take a look at the state of the teachers. Oh, the teachers are broken. Apparently two lectures at the same time for this, this teacher. And let's take a look at the curricula and they're broken too. And actually we have now 14 hard constraints. Um, this is not going in the correct direction. We, we, we are breaking more and more by actually uh, try, when we're trying to improve stuff. So um, let's instead try to see uh, what OptoPlanner does. Uh, so let's, let's, let's just let OptoPlanner solve it. As you can see, in quite some, in not a lot of time, it's actually gone to zero hard constraints. It's currently even improving the soft constraints, which I'll explain in a minute. But you can easily see that there are no hard constraints broken, so no curricula, uh, curriculums, uh, curricula which I have um, two lectures at the same time, and no teachers uh, which have two lectures at the same time, and no rooms which have two lectures at the same time. So this is a feasible solution. This is something we can give to uh, our school and execute there. Uh, but as I've said, there are also soft constraints, and uh, these are the things that OptoPlanner is now trying to improve even more by moving stuff around without breaking any of the hard constraints, or at least not, or, or only temporarily. So um, what is that? Well, one of the soft constraints, or several, is uh, to minimize the number of days that the lecture is being given. Uh, another one uh, is to uh, to compact the, the them for the curricula. So that means that uh, they try to uh, sequence the, the lecture so they are giving in, in sequence. Um, this is, the students really like this, so they don't have to attend, uh, so they don't have to waste too much time, for example, to come for one hour on a Friday. They really like it that all of their lectures are in sequence on the same day. Um, in this implementation, uh, this doesn't happen for the teacher. There's no soft constraint which says the teachers uh, would like that too, but it's practically pretty easy to add. You just copy paste the curriculum one and ingest it so it's for it, it counts for teachers. Or you could just invent new ones, like for example, say that if a teacher um, prefers to give his lectures on a certain time that you uh, if, if this system can um, accomplish that, that you get that it gets some uh, soft constraint uh, uh, reward for that. Um, and it will try, of course, to maximize uh, the soft constraints. So um, in this case, there are only negative constraints, so that's an, it's a negative number. Um, but uh, so it will try to minimize the penalties in this case. Um, but if you add rewards, then it will try to maximize the rewards while minimizing those penalties too, of course, right? OK, that's great. Uh, we have a feasible solution. We can give this to the uh, students and to the teachers and uh, we try to met with their desires as much as possible. Um, but uh, what? But you might not be entirely comfortable with letting a system like OptoPlanner decide uh, who's teaching, uh, you know, um, when the teachers are and the students are following a certain course and uh, where that will be held. Um, you might sometimes want to override uh, what OptoPlanner chooses for you for whatever reason. Maybe uh, the boss says, okay, I want this lecture on that place, no matter what. And there are several ways you can you can actually um, enforce that. One way would be to just add a score rule, which says, okay, what the boss says is, is most important. Um, but you can also lock things in place. And, and I'm going to show locking at this point. So let's take a look at, uh, let me just reset the data set. So we have again, uh, three hard constraints broken. And let's see, uh, say for example, that I want to have the mat, this mat course on the third period of that day. So let's move that to the third period of the day. I've moved it to over here. Uh, and as you can see, um, okay, there's still, uh, actually we just broke more hard constraints by doing that. Uh, and let's say, okay, Opto Planner, you're going, uh, you can solve it now. Um, but what, look what happens to this mat course. 
Well, the first thing it's going to do is going to, it's going to move it <laughs> um, because it, that's not the optimal position. Um, so um, yeah, uh, that's no fun, of course, right? Because it's just undid what we uh, forced it to do. So um, there's a way to fix that, and let's let's go to uh, let's do the initial let's, let's load the initial data set again, and this time let's uh, move it again to over there, but let's lock it. You can see I've just enabled the locking, so make it immovable during planning. As you can see now, it has a locked symbol. That basically means that Opto Planner has to stay of this, um, but it will still take it into account. It will still make sure that no lectures are, that there are no conflicts with this lecture. So let's see what happens if we solve it. As you can see, uh, quite fa it takes a little bit longer now to find a hard, to find a feasible solution because yeah, it's annoying that this one is stuck there, but it does and uh, and it finds uh, a better and better solution to uh, with regards to the soft constraints as we give it some more time. But as you can see, it's uh, it is following our regret, our desire. So we can override the behavior of the planner and choose a go. I want this lecture to be given at that time, at that place, no matter what. Uh, this is a nice thing, uh, especially if you want to say to the teacher, I can guarantee you will have that lecture at that time. So because we might want to stop planning at this point in time and tell some of our teachers you will be giving that course at that time, but we might get some other uh, we, we might get um, some new uh, lectures which we didn't know about yet that we have to plan to. So what we can then do is lock uh, part of the solution which we already told the teachers and then let planner, uh, Opto Planner play with those new lectures and try to optimize this uh, together with the lectures which haven't been locked yet. So there's a lot of opportunity there. Um, okay. So thank you for watching. And if you want to know more about Opto Planner, just go to the website optoplanner.org.